Gripaholics, this is part two of episode 114 of this week in RIP. We pick up where we left off in part one, talking about the selection process of the third event in King Kong each year. For more on that, go back and check out part one of episode 114. Also, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and leave comments about the discussion topics, brother. So we started off as the hub. Then we had the controversy okay. of how does your fingers have to place? Oh, you gosh. Know, and I got fed up with that argument. I forgot yeah, all about yeah. that. Yeah, oh, man. yeah. That was just a keep me up at night. So then we went to the shallow hub, which that was the same, similar, but better. Um, and the stub was punishment for all the shit I got for the subs, frankly. You <laughs> call what it aggressive is. motherfucker. <laughs> I am highly passive aggressive. You? <laughs> I'll show these guys. Poor Jay. You guys shouldn't let Jay me on the it. show if you don't want the truth. <laughs> so. No, I want the truth. I love the truth. Jed, so, did you hear that? That's stuff? why you had to lift on the stub. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring the stub like back, there was bro. a legitimate reason. You had no idea that it was payback. It was retribution. <laughs> it, okay, that, that's true. It also fits the bill of it's – you always need that third lift to be something to screw up everybody's plans. Oh, okay, gosh. I don't want It to is like the pinch. X Factor lift every year. It is it, to it screw is everything like the, up. Yeah, go out of your yeah, comfort zone style lift. You know what you should do with right. that third event just because it's not tested often? You should put the lever top in there. No, because that would fit in line with the crusher. If you have a strong wrist, by and large, you have good crushers. Then it helps <laughs> James. Well, what the hell's my problem? Yeah. <laughs> what if my crusher yeah. lifts suck? Yeah. Okay. Well, it was but, just a um, suggestion. <laughs> it, it's been actually that one has been d- discussed at length, as far as okay. a lever event goes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it has. So, um, me up. the moon top, that was an evolution <laughs> from the get away from the stub because that was brutal. That was mean, okay. apparently, you know, stub wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The campaign worked, so we got rid of the stub. The moon top, I like it. Um, it is a weird, it is a weird implement for sure. Well, it was um, one of Jed's favorites, as I recall. See, I don't remember minding that too bad. I didn't. Really? I don't think so. Did I? I mean, I would have said something if I did. I mean, it, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I didn't think well, I hated that as much Alan as the had stub. This conversation. Like well, before, I I was on the show. I thought you and Alan had this conversation, and 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 Alan was pro moon top, and you were not so pro moon top. But okay. Uh, well, you might be right. I don't know. I'm not sure. I I don't remember. I don't remember having as much resentment to the moon top as the stub. I, I, I <laughs> what's next what's 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 next year then, Andrew, the finish ball? Uh, that- oh, I don't even think about it until sometime in January. <laughs> Honestly, if you guys hadn't brought me in the show I wouldn't be thinking about King Kong again. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. It's sort of the post contest you know, like people are approaching you. That was fantastic. We gotta do another one and you're like, leave me alone. No. Just <laughs> yeah. November and December is my off months. <laughs> understood. Um, totally understood. Yeah. And the, the shallow dub hub, on one end, I like it just because it's, um, you know, Gil was willing to work with us on the rules and let it be anything goes to simplify the ruling. Okay. So, and kind of me and Gil are kind of in alignment, you know, if, the, if you can't engineer out the way to cheat, then they can do it. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's where it leaves us like, now. Yeah, and I think on a shallow hub, it's like, I don't know, it's, I think it's a lot different. If you give me like a, you know, an iron mine hub or something and I doorknob it, 
I'm going to lift a lot more weight on it. On a shallow oh, yeah. hub, it's like, you know, it, it, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm, I guess it makes a difference because that's, what, that's the, the, the technique people are going to use. But I don't think it makes so big of a difference. And maybe I'm wrong because, I, you know, my shallow hub experience is, you know, very little. So. I don't even think I'd, I'd use the claw style grip on the dub hub a single mm-hmm. time. Really? I, I, Circo was doing the doorknob, and I was like, I'm going to try that. And I never never mm-hmm. went back. Okay. Right. Okay. Because I don't like oh, that. Good. I don't like the claw grip because I hurt my fingers one time doing that. Doing that when yeah. uh, the, the, the steak dinner challenge, I used... I didn't even use the shallow hub. I used a regular, for, or not a regular, mm-hmm. a Billard 45. Yep. And when I went for, I think I maybe went for a combo lift, the hub plus 15 and then the inch in the other hand, and something snapped in my finger. One of those pulley pulley tendons went. So uh, I was hurt for a little bit. So, yeah. Those, that's an awful injury. Mm-hmm. I, I did that on that stirrup one year, and it was like six months before my – Index finger healed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, Andrew. So, so, so the the selection, the event selection is, is it is it primarily you and Eric, or do people are people bringing you events? Do you vote on it? Uh, me and Eric decide. Okay. Um, I know we've gone a little back and forth years, and but you you can usually come to an agreement. Yeah. Um. You getting some results back in that survey that you put out? Yes, I do. Cool. Quite a few. Actually, I got most this year I've ever seen, about uh, 67 responses. Um, nice. It's kind of what I would expect. You know, I ask two questions because this is the theory behind the survey. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you want to get rid of. And if I had a perfect contest, it should be 25, 25, 25, 25, right? Well, okay. I'm not there yet. So tell me what you like. Right now, there's almost a three-way tie for first place between Flask, Crusher, and Little Bighorn with everybody hating the hub, more or less. <laughs> okay. So wow. so the, the X-Factor lift is still the lift the majority of the people don't like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. So... Well, it, 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 it amazes me that many people like to flask. Just, you know. mm-hmm. Well, and then there's, there's yeah. another factor that we've got to look at um, is cost. For example, I know yeah. I got lots of messages on the survey, hey, switch the little big horn to the legend, Dan, but which, hey, that'd be great. I'd love to sell almost 30 of those suckers in one year. However, sure. those things are 250 bucks a pop. Yeah. That's not a reasonable request when you're trying to get outfit people in Europe anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, yeah, it's thoughtful, thoughtful too. You know, mm-hmm. you, could, you could very easily be like, yeah, sure, you have to use my equipment in, in this piece. And it's like, you know, you're, you're doing that with the crusher. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. your, your crushers are getting out there. So that makes sense. Yeah. Right. Is, do you find that there's more little bighorns out there? Is that what it is? Because of A the, lot of the, the venues already had them. Okay, gotcha. Which was a help. Um, plus, there was also a lot of um, interest that we were suspecting from the arm lifting movement, bringing them out. Gotcha. So, okay. uh, where, where me and Eric went back and forth was we didn't want it to lock out. So we finally said, well, let's do the little bighorn, but let's force it into a six-inch lift. We can keep the crossbar. Yep, yeah. Okay. And that's where we compromised. <clears throat> that makes sense. So... Well, that makes sense. I mean, okay. I mean, if you took logistics out of the equation, I'd put the one hand euro back in, just because I like that thing. I like that event personally. You would get, get that no thing down to two from inches. Me. Yeah, move <laughs> that down to two inches, and I'll lift on it all day long, happily. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, Jed, you said you had questions for Andrew about the. Um, uh, it's a little bit in my mind. Is the rule sheet? The rule sheet. You okay. said you wanted to go over something with him. Mm-hmm. I forgot what it was. Um, and I'm asking you to remember something, which I know is very difficult for you. Did we talk about it last week? 
No. Was it rules or results that you were talking about? Uh, did I just say it today? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, if I said rules, then I probably misspoke, and I just meant going over this uh, oh. the historical record sheet. Okay. I think that's oh, what it was. Oh, the historical record sheet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, basically, what I liked is that you're able to pull everything – you were you were able to pull all the results and put everything together so that you could see how things have changed and um, mm-hmm. like uh, evolved over the years. So yeah. um, it's it's interesting that well, first off, the the first competition was in 2013. We're in 2019 now, and if you look across the board, the flask. So the flask has basically um, caught up to, or almost almost completely caught up to the world record in the one-hand pinch on the Euro. And that's very interesting because um, the Euro has the kinetic, I'm going to say the kinetic advantage of the pipe, and it strikes your leg and it almost... It doesn't deload the lift, but it becomes a, a factor of advantage in the lift, whereas that kind of thing is totally impossible with the flask. There's no way anything's going to hit you, and if it does, it's probably going to hurt because it's probably going to be that knock bar swinging around at you. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about with the one-hand pinch yeah. on the Euro? I do. I, I've never had that happen where it's actually hit me in the leg. So, but... But I, I know we've talked about it before, so I know yeah. that it is a thing. Right. So yeah. we, I, so it became such a thing that some people were actually starting the pipe on their leg in order to get that advantage. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it kind of, like, distorted the records. But I didn't realize, and it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see this, really, without this document. But we're basically there already. I mean, but, but 2004. 16 we eliminated you you had to keep the euro off contact from the body outside of the hand mm-hmm. and here you see the record drop from 59.5 to 57.08 yep and that was Cody and I can tell you from you know from him being here he was stronger when he came in in 2016 than he was in 2015 but that technique took him down a couple pounds yeah yeah he almost got it he almost retook the world record with the new technique, but he just couldn't get a cut the last couple inches up in height. Right. So he cracked air on it, but he couldn't finish it off. And um, yeah. that same year, so 2016 was the year that I hurt my back, about mm-hmm. two weeks before the competition. And it was one of my worst finishes overall. But I actually took a stab at the world record on the Euro uh, on my last attempt. And yep came extremely close to getting it. Now, I don't know if it would have, st- like, had Cody gotten his left, if mine would have been over his or not, and I don't remember what the number was. But um, just, I mean, that was something where I was yeah. like, screw it, let's do this. And, you know, being hurt for two weeks, I I didn't, I wasn't able to train during that time, but uh, not sure where I was going with that, but... Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. You guys know I love pinching, and that's always my favorite event. So um, yeah. I, I love looking at that stuff. Um, I'm, I've, I've been doing the King Kong since day one, and I remember I remembered the one-hand axle the first year, but I don't even mm-hmm. remember doing it the second year. Isn't that funny? I don't, I don't remember the 2014 contest at all. And I'm mm-hmm. sure I, I ran it and, and competed in it and everything, but... I don't remember the. I, I guess I forgot that the events were the same the first two years. Oh wow! The first Are you year. Sure, you fir- competed in twenty fourteen. I'm trying to. I'm almost certain I did. All right, keep going. Yeah, well, yeah, it was twenty thirteen. I ran a contest in my gym. It'd been a couple years since I ran one, oh. and Luke came to it. And he was like, when's the next contest? We've got to go to the next contest. So that was the one that Chez ran 
mm. um, in someone's garage oh, in, in upstate right. New York, and it was like 20 degrees, and we were all like wrapped up in blankets and shit. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Love, yeah, like, that's it was, right. It was super cold. 2014, I would have... I would have run it here, mm-hmm. but uh, I don't. I don't remember. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Maybe I ended up not. Yeah. But, um, for, uh, I don't have the scores on this computer from 2014. Yeah. Right. Only like 2016. It's like I totally, I totally don't remember that. It's like totally gone from my memory. But I remember, uh, I remember doing the shallow hub for a couple of years, and the V bar. Mm-hmm. V bar is always a pain in my ass. That doesn't work mm-hmm. for my wrist either. But, uh... Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. we have anything else for Mr. Penke today? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, we've had 12 world records set in King Kong so far. That's awesome. 12 world records? Um, Yeah. Isn't it interesting that Ari Siltiauha won the overall in 2014 mm-hmm. and has never competed in King Kong again, as far as I know? Really? Yeah. Truth. To this two, day, I don't know who he is. Two Finnish competitors. First off, uh, Yuha won the first year. Then he kind of went into, like, semi-retirement. Ari won it the second year. Ari Siltiauha. Then I won it the third year. Oh, wow. Then Gil, yeah. then Alexi, two years in a row, and then this whoever this Tanner guy is. I don't even know who he is. Gotcha. Some, no, some yeah. no-namer. Yeah, I feel like that name has come up before, but it doesn't ring a bell. Look at the Stephen Ruby, well, dude. Stephen Ruby, third place overall in the first contest. I'm not sure if he even does grip anymore. That dude was a monster, James. I don't know if you remember him. Oh, yeah. No, was, I don't. He was big dude. He was a big dude, yeah. six five maybe, maybe more, close to three hundred pounds probably. Huge dude. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Yep. Well, that's pretty. I'm cool. waiting for Uni to make his uh, comeback tour. Three years, dude. Uni, he was second Uni, three, three years, years in a row. row. I thought it was twice. Three years in a row, 2015, 16, and seventeen, mm-hmm. dude. Yeah. Well, he he's all yep. around pretty. Damn amazing! I mean, you can't you can't yeah. fault that. I mean, you, even taking second three years in a row. I mean, that's you have to think about the level of performance three years in a row to do that well. Yeah, you know, in that field, it's 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 got to be close to, if not as ex- impressive as Alexi winning it two years in a row. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's like mm-hmm. that's some unbelievable consistency across uh, a lot of implements. So yeah. no doubt. That's super strong. Super, Whatever happened to Fitz strong. DeBova, Andrew? I don't remember hear, hearing anything about him for a, quite a long time. I don't think. I'm sorry, who? Fitz DeBova. I think he's a. I think he's a Canadian. Maybe I'm wrong there, but he was the he was the exceptional lifter in 2016. Oh, okay. I haven't heard from him in years. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah, Tanner, and then Yves, yeah, Yves kind of surprised me, but then again, it made sense when Tanner jumped up a weight class. Yeah. Another guy you don't hear from in grip sport anymore, which is a shame because he's very talented, uh, John Stepien. Mm. Yeah. Just not interested. Yep. Just not interested. Huh. Is that what so, that is, huh? And he was the first place 120-plus in 2016. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I watch, I, I look at a lot of Johnny's stuff, so it is kind of surprising yeah. not to see him uh, interested. It, it seems like he's There's... definitely interested in, well, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a lot of names here that take you de- back in time when you look through this that you just don't see as much anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. Chez with the third place finish in the men's 120 in 2014, mm-hmm. and then you don't you just don't see his name at the top much anymore after that. Right. Of course, he's had a a long run of oh. 
injuries, injuries from head to toe. So, right. But he's coming well, back strong, dude. Yeah. Yep. Well, well, the first couple of years, 13, 14, and 15, we were around 70 competitors. Then we doubled in 2016. You know, then we stabilized around 170. Now we're back on the growth spurt. So trying to predict if next year we're going to see another growth year or maybe a stabilization year. I don't know. So much. Well, let's predict growth. Let's be yeah, optimistic. Absolutely. Um, yep. Look at the – if you look at the few first – the first few lines of the – of this document, it has all that information, the venues, the athletes, men, women that competed, all that's there. This document is awesome. It really is, dude. Thank you. I, I really appreciate you putting this together, Andrew. Well, thanks. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was a little self, uh, self-needed because I was driving me a little bonkers trying to remember stuff because I can't. It's all starting to meld into my head sure. what's happening. And the other thing that happens, like, I, I describe it as the writer's philosophy, where it's like I mm-hmm. remember the scores that could have been, might have been, the ones I've messed up, the ones I've submitted, and then the ones we've amended. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I can't keep them straight anymore. <laughs> no. So. Eight venues uh-huh. at, the first, at the first King Kong. Yep. Eight, yeah. Yeah. Now this year, I got the impression. We, I mean, we, it seemed like we had a lot. We had some big venues. Don't get me wrong, but we also had quite a few small venues. I know mine was definitely small. Um, How many cancellations did you have this year? Practically everybody. Oh no, no, no! Michigan I'm sorry. I, I, I guess I meant like um, the whole entire sorry. location canceled. Just one. Just Nigel. Just, one. Uh, just Germany. Germany canceled it. I thought it. Nigel. I thought Nigel canceled this year. Mm-mm. I thought no. Nope. He, he ran in Florida. Oh, I, he never confirmed. He oh. talked about doing it. Um, I don't put you on the list as a venue until that initial fee gets paid. Yeah. Because then I could. Because then it gets back into that zone of the number of people that have talked about doing it. Right. You know, because there was a few okay. more than that. Yeah. Well, yeah, he couldn't get anybody to sign up anyway, but then I think he, he said that uh, there was a hurricane the weekend that he was going to do it. Oh. So he had reason. to cancel. That's a very good reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what else we've got here. I think we've got the classes good for the men's. Uh, we might tweak the women's class next year a little. Uh, we're going to, I don't know, we're gonna, me and Eric are going to talk about that next year. See what we want to do with that. So, I okay. mean, when 32 participants, I don't think we can justify going the whole gambit yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Were you, yeah. Were you going to have fewer or more women's classes? Probably the same, but probably reorganized. Oh, okay. okay. At least that's what I'm going to be pushing for. Well, you know, it can be a controversial thing, too, and – and, and it's a lot more complicated than a lot of people think. It like is. I, I can remember running, running uh, women's classes at our events, and, you know, there was a lot of pushback from women in, in the sport of arm wrestling to, to get the same amount of money in the classes as, as the men's classes, mm-hmm. you know, for first, second, and third. And, you know, this, a, a couple of times we offered money, and, you know, we had jackets one year that were expensive, and – you know, expensive awards, and we just wouldn't get the support, you know. Right. So, like, we did that a few times, and then we started combining, you know, some of the women's classes, and then we, you know, people were saying, oh, now you're going to combine the classes. And it's like, well, we don't have a choice. We're, we're, we're spending all of this money on awards that aren't going to – that we're not getting even close to back in, in entry fees. Or we'd have empty, empty places in, in a class, and we'd actually have – you know, some women in the audience that would be like, hey, can you just compete in this class and we'll just, you know, give you whatever it takes for third place. And meanwhile, there's, right. these, you know, all these guys that have worked their butts off to try to win this weight class or, or, or place that, you know, they're not going to get anything, you know, mm-hmm. if they, if they right. don't place top three. And it's like, so when we started cutting that down, it became, it, we, we got a lot of pushback. And, and a lot of what mm-hmm. my message was, was like, listen, it's not the fault of the women who show up every year because 
you know, or, or to every event that we had because they they were there and they were just as dedicated mm-hmm. as the guys. Oh. It's just it's just the sheer numbers. It's getting uh, it's getting more mm-hmm. competitors out. And, uh, you know, that was, that was the hard thing because it's, it's, it's difficult. You don't want to reduce the weight class it is. to punish the women who show up, you know. No, no, you don't. And, yeah. um, you know, one of the things that came out of the survey, which didn't even cross my brain pan was, which made sense was, you know, some, a couple of women commented, uh, the shallow hub, it's really hard if you got long fingernails. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I never went there. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's that's a I legit mean, concern. Okay, that makes sense, and, and not just to pick on the women's, but if you, let's say let's look at the men's fifty-nine kilogram class, that thing has been—I refer to that as my flip a coin class. I don't know what the heck that thing is going to do year to year. Um, every yeah. year we debate on canceling that thing because you got, some years you get one guy that shows up, and other years you got ten. Yeah, wow. it's random. It's just, yeah, that's yeah. very random. Yeah. yeah, that's that's one that's always kind of drove me a little bonkers trying to figure that one out. Yeah, the very lighter weight classes are that way. It seems like. Yep. You know, which is weird because, like, well, what I can tell you, at least from arm wrestling, the international competitions, mm-hmm. you you get some of these smaller weight classes, and sometimes you have fifteen, twenty guys in there, and then mm-hmm. you have the same class in the U.S. and oh, it, there's none. one or two or or no one you know, in their combining weight classes. So, you know, I'm not saying Americans are obese or whatever, but... You wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> but that could have something to do with it. <laughs> or, you know, and it could just be that, you know, there are... And it could just be that at least here, uh, strength-related sports are more attractive to bigger guys. Yeah. Yeah. And so. you do see that, like, when I do the weight classes by regions... I've run that in the yeah. past, and you will see it's, there's a regional trend, which makes sense. It fits. Yeah. What do you, what do you yeah, mean by that, Andrew? You, you caught my... Well, for example, I'm not going to get a lot of 74, 66, and 59s out of the U.S. or Canada. Oh, it's okay. It's just not going to fly. Or um, whereas, on the other hand, like Italy, Russia, uh, those lighter yeah. classes are very well represented with some very strong people. Right. And then, of course, we've got yeah. our mutant in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's funny. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're talking about Jerome yeah. Bloom, obviously. Yeah, yes. you know. But in um, <clears throat> you would go to some events, and, you know, if you, you arm wrestled against some guy that was like 55 kilograms from, like, you know, the Republic of Georgia or the Ukraine, you know, and you're like, Oh my God, this kid's so strong! It's unbelievable. You know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. Meanwhile, there's like 15 of them over there that are like, you know, just unbelievably like just powerful. And then you know, you get over here, it's just it's it's hard to find grown men that size over here. It is, you know. So so I think that that has a lot to do with it. Sure. Andrew, have you have you maintained any kind of data as far as the body weights, like the the average body weight? per competitor or, or anything like that? Average per competitor? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, our 105 or 93 is always going to kind of. No, I just average, didn't know if, I just didn't know if you've ever gone in there and digested all the, the body weights of the competitors themselves and maintain that kind of stuff. Would there be able to, would you be able to pull out body weights averages per, you know, country or anything like that? If not, it's okay. It's just something occurred to me right now to ask. No, I haven't gone that level of depth. Um, well, that's bullshit. Like, you better get uh, on that. <laughs> get on that. In 2013, Jed was 270, yeah. and and you know this year he was 235, kind of thing. Uh, no, it was, it was okay. more like the other way around, actually. I was 265 no, just, this year and uh, two like okay. 31 in 2013. Believe it or not, lighter. Yeah. Um, now. Where I was kind of happy we were able to do this year was add in the kids' class, mm-hmm. the youth. Yeah. Um, you know, we got 37 children involved. So That's really that's cool. Awesome. That's quite yeah, a big jump up. and um, That's the future. I mean, I think we're going to have to do a little bit of um, exploration on that. But, again, I, like I told a lot of competitors, some people were saying, well, they can't hit the knock bar. I'm like, well, don't worry about it. Just have them lift the clock out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, this is a 
this isn't that serious. Were there, were there any use lifters that, that really stood out? Did you notice um, that, that put up some numbers that you were like, whoa, how old is this kid kind of thing? Um, no. I mean, the, okay. the, the, the boy that was at um, Jed's location definitely caught my eye. Um, I mean, there is some strong um, 16, 17, 14, 15-year-olds that were involved. Yeah. Um, they definitely have a base to start off of. I know there's a few 14-year-olds I don't want to compete against. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think so the, ki- the, the boy that competed with me is Aaron Carr, and he mm-hmm. absolutely loves lifting. I mean, the, the kid never misses a workout. He's a wrestler. Yeah. So, so he's there That's all the time. Awesome. Parents are extremely supportive of the, you now, know, of the lifting. Now, Aaron. Yeah. Now, I've got him listed down as um, – now, I'm not as fussy with weight classes because we don't have kids' weight classes. Like, did you put him down as 159 pounds? Yeah. Or is he a giant boy in kilos? Okay, pounds. Pounds. <laughs> okay. No, he's, he's, uh, he's a wrestler. He's um, 159. Or, I think he competes he, – he goes back and forth between, like, 155 and 165 weight class, depending on, how, you know, how many kids sign up, stuff like that. I mean, okay, because there are some of the kids that also, you know, that are like in the 74, 66s or so that also chose to compete in the Open. Yeah. And they yeah. did a dual competition. Yeah, well. He probably uh, next year would be viable. Yeah. Well, um, if, there's, if there's anything that I can do, like, like if you're trying to pull some data as far as for certain lifts for the kids, like if you if you want me to, I can have a bunch of young kids try implements, dude. Okay. Um, I have I have like a dozen youth athletes that are fifteen and younger. So okay. I I could if you, if you wanted to, wanted me to run tests and see what they could do things like that, then I'd be more than happy to do that sometime All right. All right. for for next year. If you were looking to expand that or try to make it more. You know, enhance it a little bit for next year. I'd, I'd be, I'd be perfectly willing to help out in any way that I could. All righty, yeah, because my kids are a little young for testing on them at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The uh, well, I'll just get them all in there at the same time and, and say uh, we're going to have a grip contest. There you, you go. Know? And I could run a, I could run the challenge on whatever implements you're looking at, maybe doing, or, mm-hmm. or I could see like what works well for their hand size, things like that. I love it. Mm -hmm. Because I can uh, see him doing it again. I mean, he he, at one point he had the world record for two-hand pinch on the Euro. I don't know if he still does for his age group, but he did. So, um, you know, he's into it. He likes that idea of having records and stuff. So nice. Yeah, get on the AKA the King Kong Research Department. Yeah running pre-test, post-test designs out of peak, stre- peak strength and fitness. That's right. In Lucy, Pennsylvania. That's right, brother. I like it. R&D. That's it. And he's good. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. So well, what else for, do we have, guys? I don't know. I think we, we ran through most of it. Was there anything else that you wanted to go over, um, here, Andrew? You want to end on a little controversy? Make it interesting? Why not? Let's do it. All right. What is your wild card pick event? For next oh, year? Oh, dumb hub. What, would you want, what do you want to see in there and why? Are you, are you talking to us? Are you actually asking Yes. Us? You. I'm asking you. You're asking me specifically? Specifically well, This is a tough you. one. You know, I want to be, I want to be as objective as possible here. <laughs> I would say you should go with the lever top. <laughs> I think that's a great yeah. idea. That's a fantastic I have, idea. I have played with the idea of adding a fifth attempt, fifth event. I'm sorry, English, Andrew, English. Fifth event yeah. and making it a lever or, you know, like a lever top or some wrist dominant based event. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, shut down quick. <laughs> well, the problem is. 
the problem is I, I don't know like it's the standardization process is tough for like a sledgehammer type event. Exactly. Yeah, um, I know it is. And you know, I really like the sledge choke and I I really only had a chance to do it once at my first event ever. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like I would really love a ch an another shot at that, but nobody offers that. And I really thought that was a cool lift. Well, it's because everybody started bitching when uh, Luke won both hands at the Nationals in 2014. And then people were trying to put, like, nuts on the hammer with a, with a ball. Yeah, but, but, like, I see, this is what I don't get about people bitching about – you know, Luke's technique. I mean, you know, people have bitched about mine too. Mm. But, but it's like, listen, to those people who bitch about Luke's technique, grab the back of a 14-pound hammer, however the hell you want, mm -hmm. okay, and lift it off the ground with a quarter on the top of it and put it on a platform. Good luck. Right. Let me know how that goes. Right. You know? Well. So it's like... If, there's a, if, there, if people are going to find, and look, in any sport, people are going to find different techniques. Like, in the same way that people bitch about, you know, my hammer tilting, you know, it's like my arm is straight down, and, and sure, my wrist is bending down a little bit, which is why the hammer is tilting, but I'm not like one of these guys whose arm is bent to a 90-degree angle whose wrist is jacked down, because at that yeah. point, you're not even testing ulnar deviation. A radial right. deviation. At that point, it's mm -hmm. like pain tolerance and just holding on for dear life and, and, and hand strength, you know, and, 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 and I'm still impressed with it if guys can do that. Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't understand why there has to be, you know, the controversy over it. I just don't get it. Yeah. I feel like if you can well, – it, it, and I think it's a really cool event. I don't know. I, to me, but, you know, what do I know? Yeah, I mean, the sledge yeah. choke would be something that I would suggest, but, again – there's a lot of controversy and you're never it's so hard to find two identical hammers i mean even the 14 mm, sure so we'd never weighed the 14 pound hammer that we bought for the 2014 national championship we just weighed it the other day and it weighs 16 pounds yeah like it, it weighs yeah. it weighs like three ounces or uh point it was like 0.3 pounds less than our 16 pound hammer sure but so the other thing too is is, is it's like okay if if we could if we could agree on or we can all get our hammers from the same place, and if there's a standard handle size, because look, I mean, I I know this for a guy with a small hand. If you use a thinner handle, it you know it it's a lot easier to lift with for somebody with with my size hand. Mm -hmm. If I use my 14, it's got a massive handle on it, very difficult, mm -hmm. you know. But if I use my 18. I can go back pretty darn far on it because the handle is so thin on it. Uh, so it's like if, if we had a standardized hammer that people had to get, I'm not saying they're all going to weigh exactly the same because that's not realistic, like, right? Mm -hmm. you know? But maybe we can all have them weighed. And then, you know, go from there. It's like, okay, well, this was weighed at a post office. This is what it weighs, you know, and do the math from there. Well, the other option I, is um, – the pickaxe, the pickaxe lift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, as long, they're not standardized either, but the nice, I guess the give and take is you can just buy the pickaxe handle pickaxe. from your hardware store and and make it to spec. Or, I mean, we've made them before. We've sold them. Um, that's another yeah. possibility. But um, I guess if I, look, if I look at this list, Andrew, and I, I look at all these yeah. pieces of equipment, because um, you got to remember, I mean, every year there's always been a controversy on yeah. almost every event. Right. Yeah. So uh, if you don't mind, I'll just go through and I'll just I'll think of some pros and cons. So like go Iron Mind Hub, you got the con of lockout. You got the con of what grips are allowed. And you got the con of, um, you know, how well is the implement going to season, take chalk, et cetera. I was just going to say, um, that's actually why that implement was removed. Yeah. Because of the paint variation. I got right. three of them I can pull three different numbers on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then you go to Shallow Hub. I mean, as much as I respect David Horn, the stuff that he puts out is so inconsistent, it's not even funny. Um, I guarantee you put two Shallow Hubs side by side, they're not going to look the same. Stubs are not okay. going to look the same. Um, so, so that's new. I... 
they all pretty much, they're not painted, so you don't have to worry about that. And yep. the other thing that's important with this, I think, is hand size. So obviously, with either with any of the shallow hubs or the iron mine hub, you're mm -hmm. not going to have a thing where large hands is going to be an automatic advantage. In fact, exactly. I think if you digest data, you'll see that smaller hands are actually an advantage on hub lifting, where you have to use that the makes claw sense. grip. You yeah, are actually 100% correct on that. Yeah. I have to digest yeah. that in the past, and yes. I mean, yeah. I, I know the larger lifters with smaller hands and vice versa. Mm -hmm. I know enough of you guys, I can kind of figure that roughly into place. Yeah. Um, the stub, the problem with the stub is that almost everybody gets cut. Mm -hmm. And everybody, there's, like, if you cut yourself on a shallow hub or an iron mine hub, then you can move your finger over or move your thumb over and grip somewhere else. Like, there's nothing. Everybody's grabbing the same exact spot on a stub. So, like, the, the chances of a blood-borne illness getting passed along on a stub is much, much higher than on a, on a hub. Yep. Um, <laughs> you look at... Oh, no, you're right. You're right. You look at, you look at Moon Top. Um, the thing that is glaring to me there is the hand size factor. I think the mm -hmm. smaller hand people are at a much, much bigger disadvantage on the moon top versus um, even the situation probably for, like, a 2.5-inch crusher. Um, mm -hmm. We could debate that. It doesn't necessarily matter. But just for the, for the third event, I think the moon top is probably just a little bit too large for people. And honestly, I mean, with the, with the, the dumb hub, I call it dumb hub because it's, it's a hub. It's not because it's anything else. Um, but really, because you allow all the different grips, pro provided they're not sticking their finger inside the inner rim or underneath the flange, you know, you, you take out that, you take out a little bit of the hand size, you take out a little bit of uh, knowing, you know, the different techniques and stuff, you know, you, you allow more techniques to be used. I think it becomes more fair. And then as long as you have it long enough to get the aluminum to finally season and take chalk, then I think you're good. So, like, out of the selections that are already here, I think probably this year's shallow dub hub was the, the most fair, least excuses, stuff like that. Now, obviously, if people don't get to the contest or get to the, to get the equipment and touch it and get used to it before the contest, they're at a huge disadvantage. Okay, there's, there's nothing around that. There's no way around that. You get, you have to be willing to spend if you want to if you want to be uh, top top level in the sport, or you have to have time to to train on the implements uh, that someone else owns. But I mean, I I I think I think the shallow dub hub was actually a pretty fair implement this year, considering those factors. That's what okay. I think. What do you guys think on that? If you disagree, it actually you can sounds disagree. a lot like it, no, no. It's uh, you actually mimic a lot of the conversations we've had over these implements over the years. Yeah. So it's a lot of trial error, a lot of learning, a lot of back and forth. Yeah. The other thing about the moon top is like, like when's when's David going to come out with another model of that, and then everybody has to buy another model? Because I thought I was ahead of the game last year by buying a moon top off somebody and then he went and switched the models and then everybody had to buy another model of moon top. Mm -hmm. So, so that was, that was another thing that I forgot about from the 2018 well, contest. You know, one of the things that, that Andrew and I have actually talked about just, just, you know, not on a call is, uh, you know, David Horan's adjustable thick bar. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've, I've, I, I've, I've pulled on it a few times at Bob's house I think what I like about it is that it, it will take away the hand size factor just about completely because people will have a mm -hmm. choice as to what size handle. And it's got that little, that, that little plate there that prevents mm -hmm. you from mm -hmm. getting a wrap on it. Yeah. So I like okay. that. One of the things that, that Andrew had said was it, it, it kind of takes a lot of the wrist out of it. Okay. Remember, Andrew, when we talked about that? Yeah. The, the problem, yeah. I, it's not a, so much a problem, it's, it's the difference. Where a rolling handle, or at least in particular the crusher, tends to mimic very closely the action you'll get out of a cast iron inch dumbbell, that is more to me like a rim lift. 
where you get your fingers locked in place and you go. Sure. Now, um, now one of the things that you had talked to me about, and, and I don't know if you're comfortable with me bringing this private conversation up. Are you? Go for it. No, you got permission. Okay. Go for it. You had talked about, like, having a rolling implement with that stopping plate. So that's actually in the works. I'm trying to get it into production for the first of the year. I'm calling it okay. the equalizer. And what right. it is is um, this is going to – there's a neg there's always the trade-off, okay? So here's the negative. I'll be straight up with you. You've got to buy more crushers. But here's the positive. What it is is it's a magnetic piece that bolts onto your existing crusher and then creates a half-inch gap that your fingers can't go into. So, for okay. example, for me, with a half-inch gap at my fingers, it's a two-and-a-quarter-inch crusher is perfect for my hand size. Yep. But, for example, and, and I think, Jed, what? you might need a two-and-a-quarter. Yeah, but what's your hand size? Boat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. seven and three eighths. Yeah. Okay. So you're. Yeah, we're about the same size. All right. We're about the same. So that would be that would be about where right. I would be. Okay. So now, if Jed took that exact same two and a quarter inch crusher that fits my hands, his hands are going to be smashing into that thing, and he can't get a grip around it mm. at all. Yeah. It's going to be like a tip step. So that was. <laughs> so what it does is is you use the the little bolt on tool, but you got to you switch the crusher based on which one you need. Mm. So, like, for example, if you were going to run this in a contest, it would almost be like bring your crusher with you type of concept mm -hmm. and then use what fits you. Hmm. Okay. So, so like, like, I don't know how I... close. On the, on the two and a half, Jed, how close do your fingers come together? Uh, they're, they're pretty close, but I, I don't know. I don't know the exact Crack. measurement. I probably, Crack. I would guess less than an inch. Does that make sense? Practically touching. Um. Well, I think if I like, if I modify how my thumb goes on, I can actually like graze my thumb to my middle finger. But if I try to okay. lift that way, I'll lose 20 pounds. Like it's just right. not my it's not my strongest position. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Yep. So I have to do something a little bit different with my grip when so, I when I hold on to it, and that causes a, a larger gap between my thumb and fingertips. So you might be at about a two and a half, maybe two and three quarters rolling handle. Maybe. Something like so that. I, I would, so I that's something I need to get out. You, yeah, I was going to mm. say, though, I would hate to ask you this in November and December because I know it is sacrilege to ask Andrew Pankey this question, but is the equalizer something we might see in future King Kong? No, no. It's a logistical nightmare to do that. Only because while it does add the fairness to the, to the equation, when you start yeah. adding in women, children, and then some of these monstrous men, that would force you to need like an inch and a half all the way up to a three inch in darn near quarter inch jumps. Okay. Which that would then kill the whole concept there of, you know, keep the cost down, allow okay. the venues to get into it at a low entry fee. Yeah. So maybe not King Kong, but we would possibly see it in events though. Like in actual yes. contest contests. Okay, good. Yeah, like I'll probably run it at my place as an event. Uh, the rules are drafted right now where it's the event is called the equalizer, not the crusher, but it's so you need to use the one that fits your hand. Right. Okay. So. Well, thanks for you know giving us the uh, the drop mm -hmm. on that. That's cool, man. So that's something that's I'm cool. trying to get together. And it's going to be fairly. I mean, it's going to be inexpensive. It's just a hunk of a. Uh, Hunk of steel that's six inches long with some magnets in it, really. So a hunk of crusher is still your investment. Hmm? Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right, so, Jed. What are your thoughts the, about that? It sounds pretty interesting, man. It'd be interesting to get my hands on it and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. I agree. Like to to have that involved in King Kong, it would it would really make things difficult well, to have to have all those handles. It would be. So I, I can speak to my numbers, which you guys can laugh at me later. <laughs> so, like, if we I did never. King Kong right now, oh, I would expect you to. Like, if I had to do King Kong today, I would be pulling about 140 on a two-and-a-half-inch crusher. But if you let me, I say, on the equalizer, go down to my two-and-a-quarter, I would jump up 15 pounds on that almost. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So that would then, okay. you know, other people would still be on that percentage. two and a half. Yeah, so if you're on a smaller hand size, you're going to get a boost. But at the same point, um, who can I pick on with that's absolutely monstrous? Derniat, for example. I'm probably throwing him a three-inch. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. To get okay. him to actually get a gap in there. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I like this. I like what you're doing. I like what you're doing with this. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm trying to get it rolling. Um, but, yeah, now, unfortunately, for King Kong, it's got to be simple, cost-effective, as repeatable as possible. There's just so many more variables involved than just what implement do you want to do. Um, like, flask, I would actually, I would actually like to see a Saxon bar there, personally. I think they yeah. don't cut as many people. Um, after what I saw at Legends, I think a two inch is bloody perfectly fair for just about anybody. But Jed there's would also agree. logistical. Yeah, I know. Jed I expected is a him to have trouble with that bar. one. Mm-hmm. Jed is going terribly quiet. No, just uh, it would take away the it would take the take away the one hand. Yes. Yep. You know, all the events up until this point have always been one hand, so you'd be right. you'd be breaking that gotcha. paradigm. Break okay. that paradigm. So there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. Okay. Well. Well, it was a good discussion on the on the Thank events. You, Otto. Um, someone wrote me and asked me to try to pressure you on committing to what the events are going to be for next year, and I was like, well, they probably haven't talked about that yet. But nope, um, won't even talk about it until January. Yeah. Nope. Yep. Oh, well, and we would never well, press Andrew on anything, would we, mm, Jed? Oh, absolutely not. Wouldn't I dream did of it. get a couple comments on the finished ball, but I have no experience with that. So well, I can't comment on that until I get my hands on one. Yeah. Which, it would, no offense, but everybody who comments on some of these implements, you guys are costing me a fortune because then I have to go buy one and try it out. <laughs> well, the nice thing about the finished ball, I, I, I have tried that out. Mm-hmm. Th- there's no sharp edges on it. Like, I don't know how you would cut yourself. Okay. I'm sure it's possible. Like, maybe just from w- so much wear on it or overdoing it, you would cut yourself. But I, don't, I didn't see an edge on it that would okay. possibly cut you. So whether it's the finished ball or uh, a replica or whatever, um, and then at least you're not dealing with key pinch that's so narrow that you're guaranteed a cut by the end of your four mm-hmm. attempts. Because the other thing that's frustrating is you can't you can't train those implements. It's it's hard to train those implements because you're always cut. So yeah. Now yeah. some people are going to take exception to that. Michael Thomas, um, Jerome Bloom. I realize it is right. possible to do it without cutting, but I, I, hyperbole is what I'm using there. Sure. And, um, you know, it cuts are more, cuts are more common. So sure. yeah. mm-hmm. it just gets to be a frustration. You know what I mean? It's just a pet peeve of mine to always be cut. So that's why, that's why I don't, I don't like training stuff that cuts me. Cause I, cause my joy is getting the time in on the implements and training and, and having a good time in, in training. It's not, you know, taking my body to limits and, cutting myself i don't get off on that kind of stuff so um i don't like putting yeah, myself through cool. marathon workouts and so much volume i can't type on my laptop anymore stuff like that yeah <clears throat> so let me ask you something how do you how do you finish a show if alan heineck's not on here? i don't know I, I don't even know what to do bro we just we talked for I'm almost lost. two hours today and um I'm just terribly lost well, I, I will, I'll say not. this. I'll say this. I remind everybody to like the video, subscribe. Yes. We ask for questions for Sarah Chapelo, who's going to be on next week. Um, Andrew asked us for feedback on the third event for King Kong. So if anyone has feedback on that, you can leave that in the comments section, and I can I can certainly forward that information to Andrew. Mm-hmm. But also on top of that, Andrew's been real good about checking out the the shows that have been related to King Kong and kind of like uh, gobbling up those responses himself and replying and responding. So, um, so that's all good. 
Um, I mean, I guess the one thing I will say is this year was really smooth. It was fantastic. And I do read every single comment. I mean, we can't act on everything. That's just impossible. But we do read every single comment and concern. Yep. You're a good man. Mm -hmm. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. Well, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks for being on, Andrew, once again. Thank you. Appreciate it. I think this is, what, your third time being on the show? Or second? Second, I think. Second. Oh, just yeah. second? Yeah. I thought it was a third. Right. My bad. Yeah, we had him on for Legends. Yeah, definitely for Legends. I thought we had, I thought you were on one time before, like, in the past. Like, yeah, I think I'll schedule within the lineup or something. Okay, yeah. All right, cool. Well, uh, okay. thanks again, everybody. Thanks for watching. This is episode 114. Like, share, subscribe, comment, share, subscribe. Like, comment. (laughs) All the best, everybody. Take care.